So one of the things that I see happening a lot, you know, when people, um, they become aware that actually there is something to be done, that you can find out, you know, what your path is, you can feel better, you can become happy, you can heal, is that they immediately do what everyone is trained to do in this society, and even in societies which are without the economics to support it, which is they begin to go shopping. <laughs> And there's, and I've found that this kind of template of shopping on the minds of practitioners is so powerful that they're not even aware that it is operating. So I, I was wondering if we could talk a little bit about, you know, non-duality as a way beyond consumerism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we certainly see disproportionate wealth, and consumerism has brought a lot of that about. Um, you say people love to get on a spiritual path and start running around and shopping. And they go to everybody they can possibly think of, find out on YouTube, or go and see. And go oh, he's no good. Go to their retreat. Yeah. Oh, he's a guy. I've seen yeah. him. Yeah. And, and, and the search becomes the game. I mean, the, the game is I want to keep searching because yeah. I love the search so much. Yeah. And I'm not required to really let go of anything very deep. And I get to talk to all my friends about all the things they've been seeing on their search. Mm -hmm. And so I spend, and people have done this, spend decades consumerism focused on how many different ways there are to be worth doing spiritual search. What's cool and non-dual. What's cool and what's not cool. Yeah. And non-dual and yoga and Zen and Pilates and you know Tai Chi. What's cool in each one of those and who well, who really knows, who really doesn't know. And what's what do you think about them? What's your comparison? Right. The hipster way of knowledge. Absolutely. Yeah. Just, let's just go through and shop and just talk endlessly about the food that's in the cafeteria, but not really eat any of it. Uh -huh. Or as I talk about people talking about acid but never taking never it. Never taking it. Yes. Yeah. Endless discussion. Yeah. yeah. About so uh, is there a way in which even beginning some simple practices can wither that consumerism? Or is it just such a powerful template that it's unlikely to be uh, shrugged off? Well, this goes back to our, our themes about operating systems. Yeah. I, I've said this many times. We have, I believe, a deficient operating system. It may have been advantageously useful 25,000, 50,000 years ago, but now it's really not because we believe by accumulating more stuff, George Carlin, accumulating more stuff, that we'll be happier. And we've been dragging our stuff around and getting more stuff and throwing it away. And especially in the United States, we're masters at doing that piles and piles of garbage. And some people at the very top of the heap have infinite resources, basically. Something like 80 people own yeah. most, half, more than half of the world. More than half, the, the, right. the, the, less, the poorest half of the world owns about the same amount as the top 80 people. Uh -huh. And that's insane. Yeah. That's absolutely insane. We have to find some way to change that. We change incentives, we have to change, but I think more importantly, change the fact there's an ego there that believes it can get enough if it just goes in shops. But as you know from one of our local downtown eateries, there's a sign on the wall that says the gap between more and enough never closes. And it doesn't. You keep yeah. getting more and more and more, but I have a billion dollar boat and you want a one point two billion dollar boat, whatever. Well it's faster, it's, it's more fast, fuel efficient, yeah. you know. But we've yeah. got to somehow, you know, I think de egoize or at least dial it down several notches to where we aren't ego driven for a comparative basis on who has the nicest toys. So deconsumerization from the inside out. Yeah, because yeah. I, I think yeah. externally yeah. it won't happen. Well, because it seems like there's definitely a kind of morality against that people definitely wag their fingers against consumerism, right? And they, and they say, oh, you know, that's bad to want more, more, or you know, you shouldn't want to constantly be upgrading your things right. and so forth. But that doesn't really seem to have any effect at no. all, Zero. because the entire infrastructure of the world that all of us live in is built off of this, unless we're off the grid or you know in some other context, but for the most part, the great majority of the world that you're describing is has bought into, as it were, the identification of happiness with some new consumer good. And is dependent upon maintaining that, whether yeah. it's the institutions that make things, the ones that sell them to us, yeah. the religions or whatever that control us and guide us toward the things we should have and shouldn't have. Slave to consumerism. Exactly. There's yeah. just so much pressure from so many places it benefits from having us be the way we are and be believing that the next car or the next house 
or the next whatever better piece of clothing is going to be the piece that makes me happy. Right. And all evidence to the contrary. Right, but so I think people know that. They know somewhere in themselves that that just doesn't work. They, they've observed it enough often in themselves. They think, well, maybe the Lamborghini or, you know. But I think that it's a kind of, you know, there's a helplessness there because even though we know that consumerism is an utter and total failure as a method for delivering happiness or justice or and anything that we deem worthy, we don't have an alternative. And this is where the different operating system, it seems to me, has to come into play. That it has to start from looking for the consumer, as mm -hmm. it were. Who is it that wants, uh, I don't know, the new bicycle pedals? Right, right. <laughs> um, and, it, and, and what is that being? And practicing self-inquiry at the moment that there is anything associated with like a shopping craving or a desire. Well, and uh, Kahneman, his Nobel Prize winner, mm. living out on the West Coast, did a really nice study on what the people value more, experiences or stuff. And as far as lasting satisfaction, experiences win hands down. And so if you want to say, look, put aside all your needs for more stuff. If you've got a place to live in that you're not in danger, enough food to keep the body together, uh, then look at experiences. If you want to get experiences, what we're talking about with this work, the non-duality experiences, you can find some incredibly sublime experiences that will top anything, any piece of stuff you'll ever buy. You can't imagine a car or a house or a toy or anything. Or a drug. Or a drug that's going to be anything like what you can get out of doing this work. If it was that, I'd be doing something else. Mm -hmm. But there's these experiences you know too are richer, deeper, more satisfying, more fulfilling than any piece of stuff you buy. So stop falling for the consumerist hoax Yeah. and look inside for the treasure. Yeah, and, and, and yeah. believe the Nobel Prize winner who says, yeah. look, experiences are where it's at. It's yeah. not in stuff. You can't find your happiness in stuff. And where does experience happen? Inside. Yeah. 